Hi guys, very quick before we start, please hit that subscribe button so you won't miss the new videos to come and it keeps me going. Thank you very much. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia and today we're gonna discuss street photography when we have soft light in the streets. I know we all love those big contrast shots that you see everybody on the internet and we are all going to have beautiful hard contrast but for that we need hard light. So my students are disappointed when we have soft light because either it's pouring rain and that is fine or we have hard light and strong sunshine and strong shadows and this is totally fine and appreciated as well but when we have soft light then you don't have shadows anymore. So how to tackle and approach this situation which is a bit challenging because you won't shoot memorable pictures with soft light but we can do our best to try to find out a solution for that and still going home with satisfying shots. So what do we do today? If you live in the lower mainland like me you start appreciating bridges because you have to cross bridges every time you want to go downtown here in Vancouver and one of the most peculiar bridges that we have here in the city is the Granville Bridge. Why is that? Because under it, on the Yale Town side, there's a chandelier. It's a piece of art from an artist and I will go back overnight to show you how it is beautiful when it is enlightened, but today we're gonna see it with daylight. The whole environment around it is beautiful. It's uh, under a bridge, is uncommon, it's grey, it can help us get memorable shots and then we also do some hunting on our way to that bridge and on our way back so we're gonna see together the burad bridge crossing i will be riding my bike uh, we will see together that part of the city under the bridge at granville and then a bit of yale town along the seawall and going back or the olympic village always along the seawall are you ready Let's go rolling. The very first solution to have interesting shots with soft light is to help yourself with architecture. So try to include peculiar elements from the city that are uncommon, unconventional, or at least the way you look at them shall be unconventional because the same picture with hard light would lead to have nice shadows and big contrast Today we are not having it due to the soft light, so we have a smooth transition from the areas that are enlightened to the areas that are supposedly in the shadow. There are no big differences, there are 2000 nuances of grey today, but we don't have those dark, dark black areas. We are helping ourselves with architecture. For me it's very easy to do that because I'm having a 28mm lens. So that supposedly helps a lot when you want to include the surrounding and not just a close-up to your main subject. We're not having main subjects today or just a few of them that are passing by and so when we are under the bridge we will be fishing for interesting subjects while on our way there and back we will be hunting. So if you're ready let's go rolling. If you go around hunting in unknown areas of the city like in this case for my students they are very happy because they find out unconventional architecture buildings they were not aware of and they include them in the pictures together with the people that are always the main subject to our street photography so why there are interesting subjects when you go around in the city you see Plenty of people, but some of them are interesting due to their pose, the way they are standing or the way they are seated or the way they are dressed up or if they have a special dog with them or they're performing some actions. You just want to have a look around yourself and look for inspiration. And when you get that inspiration, try to include something to complement that person, that action. And with soft light, that complement most of the time can be architecture or the clouds or the texture of the walls of the floor of the ground so texture architecture or 
elements in the sky, whether they are fixed like clouds or passing by like birds, eagles, animals in general. What do we want to achieve? As always, we want to tell a story. So if that interests you, you can have a look at my book. It's available on Amazon for your convenience. It's called Tell a Story with Street Photography, Street Photography Down to Earth. And there are 1000 hints, tricks, and things to be aware of before going out and looking for your best shot. This said, we go back to Vancouver now. I really like this bridge. Why did I pick up that location? Because apart from the chandelier, which is unconventional under a bridge, the rest of the bridge is very clean, meaning you will have a gray neutral background for your pictures. And so every time you have a new subject passing by, if you want to have a close up, or integrate the subject into your setting, this is a fishing technique we are using today, then the setting is so neutral that the attention will be drawn directly into your main subject. If not to the chandelier, but bear with me, I will go back and have a shoot at that chandelier and lighten it overnight. But when I'm shooting at the chandelier and lighten it overnight, then that would be the main subject, while today, it is a compliment to the people passing by on the seawall because that part of the city is also very close to the seawall. The seawall is what we call the pathway. You can either walk or bike all along Falls Creek. Since I'm not having a hard light and I'm not having very dark areas today, I'm not shooting black and white because otherwise that would be a kind of milled grayish picture with no real darker areas to draw the attention to. And so today I'm keeping the colors, despite it's a soft light, the sky is gray, uh, the light is white. So the colors are more neutral than what we are used to. We don't have a lot of saturation and we don't have a lot of contrast, but we can play with the areas with the highlights. We can also play with reflections. We now arrive to a part of the city when we have another piece of art installed I'm referring to this red statue you see in this picture and its base is made of metal so it's very good for reflections and let's see how we can play with it. This is not a conventional session of street photography because we are not downtown so every time you have a different settings like in this case we are walking along Falls Creek of course you have to find interesting scenes happening to complement the location that you picked up. You are not having buildings here, we're not having traffic lights, we're not having traffic at all because people are either walking or riding a bike. So this is a street photography, we are in a metropolis but it doesn't feel like it, right? Because we're walking along Falls Creek. And so we are looking for interesting things to happen and interesting people to pass by to tell a story. What are they doing? Where are they going and why? Or we are eventually shooting mood shot, like in this case where we are at the dock of the Falls Creek Ferries. A mood shot because we are having a gray sky, uh, some patterns coming from the clouds and the city as a background. So we are using the cityscape right now. We cross and we are on the other side looking at downtown and we're using the cityscape as an element. So this was a very quick session. I hope it helped you find your way around soft light because when it happens, we cannot predict, we cannot influence the weather in any way, but this doesn't mean that we don't want to go out and shoot nice pictures. So with that, I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please remember to like it, share it on your social media, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos to come. And I guess I will see you later. Thank you. Bye.